We get the three of spades, shoved by Davy Jones, which is an overbet on the river, indicating that he might have sized wrongly on previous streets. And sometimes the fact that someone picks not the best sizing scheme when he's a very good player can be an indicator that he's bluffing. Hey everyone, what's up? This is Rui for Gorilla Poker. Gonna do another high stakes hand history review. Always fun and good to go through and see what we can learn from the top players in the world today. Okay, so first hand is button versus big blind three bet pot. Davy Jones opens the button. Pop cat three bets him a bit smaller uh, than the five x that I generally recommend. This might be connected to these guys being deeper. We see a flop big blind versus button. Deuce four six two tone. Now, whenever we look at the flop, we always think, "Who's this flop good for?" And that dictates what kind of strategy you want to take. Here, out of position deep, deuce four six two tone is good for the caller, it's good for the button, the button is going to make all the sets, he's going to make pair plus draw and stuff like that, big blind is going to miss with most of his 3-bet bluffs and most of his value 3-betting region that's just high card heavy, so big blind cannot range bet, he has to be a bit more cautious about what exactly he's doing here with his range. On the other hand, his over pairs generally can go for stack, so if he had a lot of those that would be good, but given these guys are deeper, you actually see less over pairs, three betting, so in that sense it's a bit less good. Top cat starts with a large C bet. This is a C bet that's very, very appropriate, specifically for over pairs on deuce four six for something like eights, nines, tens, jacks, where you just want to get money in as fast as possible before the board changes. And by betting bigger, you make it harder for your opponent to float. And this means that if, for example, you bet with tens and your opponent now folds something like queen jack or king jack or king queen. Now if the turn is an over card, you get to keep barreling for stacks pretty happily. So there's a very, very big benefit for these big sizings for your vulnerable over pairs. So top cat makes a large bet. Davy Jones calls. We get the turn deuce of diamonds. Nothing improves for top cat. Definitely not a very aggressive turn for him, but still a lot of his range should keep barreling just because he has over pairs and they're still good, right? Deuce doesn't change anything. If anything, it means his opponent has less sets, right? So he gets to keep barreling quite a lot. Here, Top Cat checks, and Davy Jones makes a very small stab, which Top Cat calls. Here again, you have to think, why stab so small? What does this mean? This is actually a very appropriate bet sizing for this spot, because Top Cat is betting very polar. That means his turn checking range is full of give-ups. When you bet polar out of position, you generally keep barreling your strong hands. So your turn check range is full of give ups, whether it's ace, ten, ace, jack sometimes, or various king high, queen high. And this small bet is just making those hands have a tough decision, kind of have to fold, but don't feel comfortable about it. So really perfect bet for the situation. Really like this bet size by Davy Jones. River, jack of hearts. Jack of hearts does not change much. Maybe one of the players somehow, you know, Davy Jones had a jack high flush draw or jack high backdoor flush draw that he floated the flop with. Top cat could have gone bet flop check all turn with something like ace jack of spades, but overall jack not going to really change much. Top cat checks, Davy Jones makes a big shove indicating he has to have a fairly strong hand and where exactly the threshold is is a bit tough to, to say. Like what does top cat go big bet then check turn? Do you have to beat a jack to shove the river? Do you have to beat a six to shove the river? Because this is deeper than 100 big blinds, a lot of guys will be winging the thresholds here, so it, it's worth taking a look at. Intuitively, I, I would guess to make this shove, there is a decent chance that beating a six is actually good enough. So Davy Jones shoves, top cat calls, and we see the hands. Davy Jones with seven, eight of diamonds makes perfect sense. Call the flop, bluff the turn, bluff the river with the bottom of your range. You block sevens and eights if those are somehow in there. So really nice play by Davy Jones, even though he got looked up. Top cat shows up with pocket nines. Now, pocket nines to me does not make sense for this line. If you're going to make a big bet, either don't do it with pocket nines, or if you get the perfect deuce turn, just keep firing. Or if you get the perfect deuce turn and you checked and you face a small stab, you should check raise. Like in my eyes, nines should have been playing a lot, lot, lot more aggressively here for top cat. He kind of trapped, but he trapped the wrong hand. Like you can trap with aces, uh, which is invulnerable. You can trap with a boat. 
but why would you trap with nines this medium strength hand that's good enough to get value on its own, needs protection, and once you start checking it's not super clear how good of a bluff catcher it's actually going to be. As always, when I strongly disagree with how someone plays, I do check it in the solver. I'll show you guys the result. And I will say that you guys might see me say on the one hand these are the best players in the world, and on the other hand I'm criticizing their play. So first of all, it's easy to do that sitting here behind the computer not in live but also i do coach high stakes players and very often what it takes to make it to high stakes is not exactly perfect technical play it's very important but it's not the top thing and this is something uh, you can see in the free chapter of the redline course on the gorilla poker website where i talk about fundamental mistakes and frequency mistakes you can actually be a really big winner without understanding some of the strategic concepts that I'm explaining here, if you're really good at recognizing and exploiting your opponent's mistakes. For anyone who thinks, you know, high stakes, everyone's a robot, these are all GTO nerds who study all the time, definitely not the case. These guys are making quite a lot of simple technical mistakes that show that they just don't understand exactly what's going on. That being said, so, deuce four six, big size, and we see that nines is okay to bet. And if you get the deuce of diamonds, nines will just barrel every single time. If it doesn't barrel, your opponent stabs small as he did, uh, you should check raise. So I uh, <laughs> went through that really fast. It's very obvious to me. I think like once you understand the reasons, and this is something I keep stressing, understand the reasons for what you're doing. Like how else would you play nines? How in the world is nines going into like bet big check call? That's like you don't understand how big bet works if you're doing it. Okay, so. Moving on to the next hand. Poker Kluka and Taxir. Kluka raises the button, Taxir 3 bets, Poker Kluka calls, Taxir sitting on a nice 400 big blind stack. Seems like he had a good session, but of course this doesn't matter in terms of strategy because we're looking at effective stack size, which is actually Kluka's stack, which is roughly 100 big blinds. So we get a7-8 rainbow board, always look at the amount of broadways, ace smashes both ranges, so this is going to be a very different board than a 10 high or a 6 high board that we've had recently. Tax here starts with a really small bet, now this really small bet is indicating that he's betting close to his full range, and it's a bet you make with kings, and then your opponent is there looking at threes or looking at queen jack high, and he's like, ah, you bet so small, what do I do? So it's a really good bet for kings for something like ace-deuce. That's why you can actually make it with your entire range when you make it. Kluka needs to call very wide and then they're going to have to play kind of tricky turns. So we get the ace of spades turn. Here Taxir should start going polar. He checks and Kluka bets half pot. Now very important again to think about the size that poker Kluka is betting. Taxir bet his full range on a flop. He got the ace turn and he's now checking. So can poker Kluka bet? something like a 7 for protection for a small size? The answer here is actually very often no, because he's just going to get called by 9s, 10s, jacks, queens, kings, and some asex. So given there are no protection bets possible, you don't really want to stab small, and that's why Kluka is going with a half pot sizing, and personally I wouldn't be surprised if the ideal sizing is actually something a bit bigger here. So tax your calls, we get the jack of diamonds river, tax your checks, Poker Kluka shoves at this point. He should have an ace or better. Probably can go fairly wide with aces here, and Taxir is going to have to bluff catch some pocket pairs at least in order to not be overfolding. Turning up the hands, Poker Kluka has five six of hearts for the open ended straight draw that missed. Very good hand to play this way. Uh, re really nothing to say. I think the hand is well played. Taxir shows up with ace four of clubs. Also, you know, hand is just well played, right? Like, you range bet the flop, you check the turn, it's kind of in between there, and, and you never fold the river because you have trips, and that strongly interacts with your opponent's value range, so we're talking about having just a very good blocker, so this hand has to print money, and something indifferent for you would be maybe something like pocket kings, pocket queens, 8-9 suited, etc. on the river. Last hand, we have Taxier and Davy Jones B battling BVB, Taxier raises to 150, Davy Jones 3 bets to 450, 3x 3 bet and not 5x because he's in position. Taxier calls and we get the king 6 4 2 tone board. Now, I did mention in a previous video, BVB ranges tend to be more polarized than small blind ranges or button versus cutoff ranges, so you see a lot more trash ranges or much wider. 
it means everything's going to be a bit more wild in terms of ranges. But still, Broadway out there, and Davy Jones says, okay, you know, Broadway out there, I'm just going to bet small probably with my entire range, which is a very common simplification high stakes players make. Bet small gets the turn queen of diamonds. There are now two flush draws out there. It's time to go polarized. And in terms of who's the queen good for, it's definitely good for Davy Jones's range because his range has more high cards, lots of them improved, and that means there are just less hands to bluff with in general. Of course, he can't really value bet with a queen, but just larger proportion of his bluffs get to bet. So he bets big. Tax your calls. We get the three of spades. Shove by Davy Jones, which is an overbet on the river, indicating that he might have sized wrongly on previous streets. And sometimes the fact that someone picks not the best sizing scheme when he's a very good player can be an indicator that he's bluffing. Because the, the best sizing scheme is, you know, fits value. Bluffs don't really care which sizings you go. That means, you know, sometimes the guy was thinking of something other than getting value as sizing, but of course not, not at these stakes generally. So Davy Jones shoves, tax your calls, and we get to see the hands. Davy Jones 10-9 off, turn the gut shot, kind of standard triple barrel, could sometimes give up the river, not, not a big deal either way, but kind of standard hand from his end. Other than the 3-bet, I'm not sure this is actually a very good 3-bet candidate, that's actually not my area of expertise in terms of being more than 100 deep. So not a big deal either way. Tax here showing up with King Queen off, which is a bit surprising, right? You might expect a check raise at some point earlier in the hand here, but lucky you didn't, because a handy check raise ten nine would certainly have instantly folded. So yeah, very very standard ABC hand. Nothing too special going on, but what I'd like you guys to take away from this hand is you know, very often when you see a barrel on King Six Four Queen, two flush draws. You might be, oh, this is really scary, let's check raise or check fold, because the guy has to have a flush draw. But, but you can see that specifically BVB, very often the barrels are going to be pretty weak stuff, like it could be 7-8, 10-9, jack-9, and these hands are going to follow through all the time, and depending on your opponent in the situation. But you don't necessarily need to be scared. Your opponent could have a bunch of stuff that's not flush draws, specifically BVB, where lots of the 3-betting hands are actually offsuit hands. That's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like and subscribe to the channel. Check out the Gorilla Poker website, GTO Ranges, course about how to improve your headline. More stuff coming up soon. I will see you guys next time.